Hi there, welcome. Uh, my name is Jason, and what I have to share with you today is how to make your own succulent wreath. This is a really, really great wreath for the holidays. I know Thanksgiving is right around the corner. Um, you can have this on display for that, as well as uh, Christmas is following, so, uh, and the New Year's. <laughs> but um, I've gathered my materials. Um, it's pretty basic, but um, you do want to make sure that you have everything that you need. Uh, first, you do want to get a wire wreath form from your uh, local arts and crafts store. Um, you know, there's a lot of different places you can get them, but you want to get a wire wreath form, and this is what will really hold your wreath in place. You know, you don't want to just make a garland and make a circle out of it because it will hold this circular shape. This really helps. Uh, I also grabbed just some stuff that I had already outside. Um, so I had some toy on uh, and some uh, juniper. And uh, so yeah, these are the, um, this is the foliage I'm going to use. Um, I just got um, a couple different kinds so that you can see, um, you know, what happens as you mix like different, um, you know, types of foliage. Uh, you can also use uh, silver dollar eucalyptus. Uh, you can use uh, boxwood. Uh, there are a number of different types of greens that you can use. Uh, a lot of conifers really work well. Just make sure they're out of reach from your pets because a lot of conifers, you know, they have a level of toxicity, uh, you know, when it comes to pets and dogs. Uh, but you know, I can't imagine that the flavors very well, so maybe they'll stop. I don't know. Just something to keep in mind. Um, also, I have gathered some succulent cuttings from my garden outside as well, and I have a bowl for um, clippings because you know I have to, um, you know, you have to clean your succulents off and then have some place to discard that. I also have a bucket right here. This is where, um, as I'm going through the toyon and the juniper, where I'm going to discard my um, the parts that I don't want, and I'll show you how I do that. I also brought some floral tape. I have some wire cutters, some floral wire. I have um, some rose strippers. I may or may not use these, but I'll show you how I use them if I do need to use them. And then I brought a pair, pair of pruning shears, uh, and I'll show you what I need that for. I also brought, um, I'm gonna use my garden gloves. If you don't happen to have a pair of garden gloves, uh, I've used these before as well. <clears throat> these, you know, multi-purpose cleaning gloves. Uh, you're going to want to use gloves, uh, especially when you're working with juniper because um, it's spiky and this just makes the whole process a lot more gentle on our uh, phalanges. So um, I have those, avail um, those available as well if for whatever reason I can't find my garden gloves. Uh, but yeah, we'll get started right away. Uh, so what we're going to start with is getting our gloves on. So, well actually, no, rewind. <laughs> um, I'm going to, I have to prep my succulents first. So, um, I've already done one of them, uh, and it's pretty simple. I have essentially just um, taken, the, I like to use aeoniums. Um, the reason I like to use aeoniums when making a succulent wreath is because they already have a long stem, and this is really nice and useful to work with uh, when making a succulent wreath um, because, you know, this will help me tie it into the wreath itself. Uh, Echeveria is really awesome. There's ways of making that work. Um, I just find them a little more challenging because they're close ground hugging rosettes. So there's not much of a stem to work with when tying it into a wreath. This makes it really easy. Um, I have a couple different kinds just to, um, you know, to change up the varieties that I'm using to add different textures. Uh, and then I have a purple one as well. Um, as you can see right here, I've wrapped the stem in floral tape. And the reason I've done that is because it helps give your, uh, the stem that you're using, a better grip, like when you come around it with the wire and the, the other, maybe the juniper or the toy on, um, it all like helps it stick together so it stays in place on your wreath. So you don't really need to poke wire through it and like wire wrap it if you have a nice good stem and you've wrapped it in just floral tape. Keeps it easy. Um, I will demonstrate really quick what you can do if say like maybe the cutting you have, uh, maybe the, the, Aeo the Aeonium rosette that you're using uh, had just a short uh, stem. What you're going to want to do is um, you can use some floral wire for that. And so I'm just taking the wire and I'm going to cut it with my wire cutters. And this is really simple. Uh, you don't have to do it unless you really need to, um, but we're going to pretend like you really need to. <laughs> um, so I just take the stem and I just, you know, maybe like half an inch down this, you know, the stem from the rosette. I'll just poke through the center of it. I'll pull it through. And then I will wire wrap it one direction, and then I will wire wrap it the opposite direction. And then I'll pull it down, I'll curl it up. And so we just, what we have right now is 
your um, try again. I'm going to try and use the sunset for this. Uh, you have wire wrapped around the stem of your aeonium rosette. So from here, and this is all pretty simple as you can see. I'm just it's wire and floral tape. So uh, I'm just going to take a piece of floral tape, and this tape will. Um, one, it'll cover up the wire for a more aesthetically pleasing look, and then also um, the floral tape has a bit of that texture that will help hold the aeonium in place when we use it on this wreath. And I just go down and around. And it doesn't have to be perfect, just enjoyable. Enjoy it. Your, your wreath doesn't have to be perfect, just enjoy making your wreath because it is fun. Uh, you can even do this with family and friends. Uh, there are a bunch of, you know, ways of enjoying this. But anyways, so um, I have, uh, the stem is now covered with the wire and, and the tape. So if for whatever reason the stem wasn't long enough, you could elongate it with the wire and the tape, and then you can still tie it in. Uh, so, and if you just have the stem and you're not going to wire it, I mean, that's pretty, pretty simple. Um, I already did these ones. So you're just going to, wrap it and it doesn't have to go all the way around it's just to get some friction uh, around the stem of your aeonium and then i just throw all of what i don't need in there um if you need to pull off any of the bottom leaves like maybe you, maybe there's too many leaves and you just want like the top rosette um that's why i brought this bowl just for that essentially uh so um here we go um, I'm not doing a bow on it because I know, um, well, I mean, I, you know, you can if you like. Uh, if I did put one on, I would do more of like a gold or, a, you know, a burnt orange in autumn color because Thanksgiving is the next holiday coming. Um, if I decided to go with Christmas, obviously, I can just change that out with like a bright red or anything under that uh, festive color spectrum. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to do no... Um, bow because I like the attention of the design to be on the foliage and the succulents that are in it um, but yeah feel free whatever makes you happy you want to throw in there throw it in there um, we will start um, tying this up so essentially what we're gonna do is um, this wire I go it's kind of I just you know go around the foliage and the succulents um, until I finish the circle and then you have a wreath and then uh, you can essentially hang it from wherever you like so like this and I'm gonna start beneath the wreath and I'm just gonna tie it and twist it and you don't have to double knot it or anything it's gonna reinforce it uh, the wire is going to reinforce the grip that it has on the wreath every time you go around so um, you will in a sense be like reinforcing it a lot um, so here are your gloves. And we're just going to weave this on here. Uh, so I'm going to start with some juniper. And I'm just essentially going to lay it in here. And I've already, you know, I've already cut them kind of in like a uniform sort of shape so that I can use them right away. And I want to go around the base. So I just take this wire on the on this this little plastic thing and I um, go around and that's one and then two and I'm gonna come towards myself with this and so like I was saying we have this bucket here I'm just gonna cut this I'm gonna throw a piece of toy on in And then just, you know, what's aesthetic, what, whatever is aesthetically pleasing to you as you go along, just go with that. So I'm going to go around this again to get what I just put in there in. I'm going to throw a succulent in. And I'm actually going to do two. So I'll do a succulent some juniper to kind of mask that um, the stem of the aeonium that I just put in here.
And you can reverse if for whatever reason you, you're, you're going in this circle and you want to change something. You can reverse. I just wouldn't wait too long to do that because, you know, you're going to have to go all the way back around if, if you aren't, you know, don't, if you want to change it. Which is kind of one of the fun things about this. It's like, it just comes out the way you put it together, as you put it together. So I'm just following this aiming with this one. I'm gonna throw in another toy on, and then just come around. I don't really like to use berries too much in this. There's a lot of different berries that look beautiful in reeds. And uh, I don't disadvise it. It's just, you know, based on where you place your wreath, be aware of where it is. You know, um, if, you, if it's in a place where you don't want, want it to drop berries like all over the floor, uh, then, you know, put it somewhere where maybe it's all right to do that. Um, it's not really much of a problem. It's just, you know, something to think about. And I'm going to do a smaller Aeonium here to kind of keep this going. And when you get your foliage, you know, I, I always feel like, you know, um, you definitely want to have enough. You don't want to run out of it. So, you know, uh, in this case, you know, to have more foliage than you need is better because if you run out, it's not fun. smells so wonderful. So, so be ready for that too. As you're breaking these uh, juniper branches apart, uh, the aroma is just wonderful. Um, I don't recommend pine so much uh, because the needles, they, they tend to fall out. Um, juniper is a pretty good type of foliage to use because it stays together. So is eucalyptus. I find that eucalyptus stays together pretty well as well. And the, the little like berries um, or seed pods on eucalyptus, they pretty much stay on the plant. They don't drop all over everything. And so as you can see underneath here, I have a big tablecloth. That makes this whole process easier as well because what it does is it provides a place for all of this mess that we're making to go. And then essentially all I have to do when I'm done is, um, is bring it outside. So you can see this is how it's coming along. And we're just going to go around. If you break some of the leaves, that's totally fine. It will just make this more aromatic. <laughs> These are really great to have. Here we go. And just some more juniper. As you can see, the sun is setting, so we've got some dappled light going on. And I kind of just stagger these, this foliage. I'll go, um, you know, toy on, then a little juniper. Once again, like I was saying, you don't have to get it perfect. Just, just enjoy what you're doing. There we go. Wherever I place the succulents, I usually have it near where I plan uh, to be the top of the wreath. So, um, Right up here is where I plan to be the top of this wreath, and or maybe right here. Yeah, so I have the succulents on the side. It really displays them nicely. You can also string these with um, 
if you've ever seen fairy lights, uh, they're these little LED lights, so they're nice and cool, but you can string them around this if you want to light this up, uh, and you can turn that on and off by a switch that's on it, and that's another thing that you can do to highlight your wreath. Another succulent. And always make sure that you have enough wire. If you don't have very much wire, you do kind of run out of it on this because uh, you use a lot of it to put this together. And I kind of like the juniper, the foliage, to, to fan outwards. As you can see, as I tie this, I'll show you what I mean. So yeah, I kind of have it, I like to fan it outwards as I go around. It creates a nice wispy edge to your wreath. You also be aware of, of where you're getting your foliage. Um, if for whatever reason, uh, if you have, maybe you have um, your, your local pest control come and spray um, your juniper outside, uh, I don't know if I would use that. Um, if, you're, if you're growing it organically and you don't spray or treat it with anything, perfectly safe and fine. Um, just, so just always be aware of where you get it. If you buy your foliage from the store, it's, it's usually always fine to use because I mean, it's been made to sell to you. So, but um, you know, you're, you're grabbing this stuff. This is very, you know, you're touching all this foliage. So you wanna make sure that you're using stuff that is, is fine. I'm wearing gloves, but you know, just something to consider and think about to stay aware of. Breathes at such a pleasant aroma to everything. If you have bay, you can also use bay leaves. Those are a wonderful leaf to use. Every time you crack them, they just smell absolutely amazing. So if you have a bay tree or you know anyone that has a bay tree, uh, that's a great plant to use for wreaths. Also, if you collect this from your garden, make sure to inspect your cuttings for critters. <laughs> when I cut this, there was a spider and the juniper. It's a cute little thing. Um, but yeah, I just let it go outside. Um, So at the, at the end, you're just going to want to kind of, you know, if, if you're getting caught, lift your foliage. And then just, this will be, it's a little more tricky at the very end, but you can do it. You just might get tangled up a little, but that's normal. <laughs> because you're getting to the spot where everything meets. So I just... Okay, as you can see, this is... It comes together relatively quick. It's not the longest task in the world to put a wreath together. 
If you were going to do a lot of these, as you can see, it, it can be a time-consuming event, but you know, it's something you can definitely do. So, I just finished this loop, and I'm just going to, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of this off. It actually looked like I, I stopped in a pretty good spot. So, I just snip that, Co I go around, put some leaves over that, and then I kind of tie it in the back. I'm sure there are a number of different ways of doing this. This is just a way that I do it. So. All right, so here we are. And so, uh, say for example, you have, you know, at the end when you, you know, reevaluate your wreath, uh, at that point, you can, you know, incorporate more, like, foliage. Like, say, I'm like, I want more, some more foliage right here. You can just poke foliage in wherever you like. And as long as you get it, you know, really get it in there, it kind of pretty much, you know, sticks pretty good because there's a lot of uh, materials in here for this to stick to. So you just want to make sure you get it in there really good so that it doesn't fall out later on. Uh, All right, here we go. So there is our succulent wreath. Uh, if there's any questions that you have about um, assembling these, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments below. I hope this video really helped you uh, learn how to make your very own succulent wreath. Uh, thanks so much for, again for hanging out with me. Uh, my name is Jason. Thanks again.